another classic. This is one of those movies that reminds me, and I'm sure of many others out there, of why we love storytelling, world building, and perhaps even sci-fi in general. Hello everybody, my name is Eddie. If you're new here, I just like to talk about movies like a dork. And today I want to talk about Dune Part 2. Sci-fi has always been a great way to ask some of the tougher questions, such as questions about love, fate, and who are we to challenge it? I remember watching Denis Villeneuve's debut film Enemy starring Jake Gyllenhaal, and even though it was on a smaller scale huh? with some thematic shocking moments, I knew then I needed to keep an eye out on whoever this director was. Even into Arrival, a certain stoic sense of facing bigger questions with actual wit and unraveling fairy tale prophecies in the wake of truer human intentions in his very first sequel attempt, Blade Runner 2049, which is a massive undertaking to somebody else's original work, might I add. Timothy Chalamet has made a household name for himself, and this will land him amongst the greats of sci-fi and in movies in general. It's all part of the plan. Zendaya is great to see her showing her teeth, and Josh Brolin is always a proud sight to see. Paul Atreides is still alive. I saw it in 70 millimeter IMAX, and I sank fully into the sands of Arrakis. If you have a spare $20 to treat yourself, please do. It is good escapism, and I know we all need that right now. This movie picks up pretty much right where the first one left off and throws us and the characters straight to the wolves. Paul will be challenged, and things will get strained. The editing and presentation make it clearly apparent from the opening sequences that the creative mind behind the tension, scenarios, and even the sound all come from a master's craftsmanship. The sound design is striking, and it scratches something for me that's hard to pinpoint. I especially love the practical creativity behind a lot of the set pieces in this movie. We get to see Harkonnen's technology work in ways we haven't seen before. In this film, Paul's purpose will be tested again and once the stakes are scarily clear, they do not let up. I've come to really like Paul's journey as a character. It reminds me of the likes of Star Wars, the original trilogy four, five, and six, and the Lord of the Rings films, the character developments and journeys in that as well. There is a new foe amongst the threats worth a mention. His name, Fade Rautha. In David Lynch's Dune I watched a while back, he was shown with frayed red hair and had a look that made him stand out as the wild one amongst alien bureaucratic crowds he was in. Albeit, what I liked about this villain was that although he was a hot-tempered and frighteningly capable warrior that was quick with the blade, he had an unexpected sense of honor in everything he did and even with the opponents he faced. Here is no different, given Denis' movie's way of giving more time to plot points and detail that the David Lynch movie had to cut out. Austin Butler does a fine and vicious performance with the unexpectedly likable villain. I love the way he acts with his evil low eyebrow look and how he plays it well for the cameras. However, there are a couple or a few moments where I felt like his voice was doing a very blatant someone putting on a bad guy voice. Voice. However, it didn't bother me too much as his physical performance and the scary weight that his character carried throughout the film more than made up for that for me. The black and white sequences. I've never read the book, so I'm not exactly sure if that's exactly how it happens there, but I was always wondering how they were going to achieve this switch of this visual flavor mid-movie and... Well, it's exactly what I love about filmmaking. It's just what I was saying before about the creative ways editing and sound design can change and transition, sway and move momentum and energies right where it needs to be, explosive or subtle. Here, the movie has a neat science fiction way of explaining why this happens and why this occurs in film. There's a very clear moment and scene that occurs, and when it does, I can't help but smile. There is a moment. Looking at all the changes on this gigantic IMAX screen, trying to count them all and look for them as if I was counting bolts on the sides of a gigantic cruise ship. Even by the end of the movie's 2 hour and 45 minute runtime, I feel like there was still so much that happened and so much that got crammed in and also so much that we still don't get. Yet. So, fate's knocking. Are you gonna take the call? Or are you gonna get mad and make your own? So that's my review of Denis Villeneuve's Dune Part 2. This adventure lands in a very special place for me. Now I can hear a question in the back of my mind, is this better than Part 1? Now, before I cower away from that opinion, uh, I would have to say I don't think of this movie as better than one or the other. I see this as simply a continuation of the same story. Part 1 was fresh, new, and alien. Part 2 is tense, driven, and especially consequential. A standalone, meaning that it's like a direct continuity of, of Part 1, but I wanted the movie to be able, someone who, has, who will have not seen 
uh, part one will be able to to enjoy part two. Uh, I gave enough clues in it uh, to to make sure that uh, uh, someone yeah. Uh, you don't need to have seen part one. If you have not seen this movie yet, please treat yourself to an outing back out into the sands of Arrakis, biggest screams possible recommended. Just mind the seats, your neck may not be thanking you after the fact. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.